What's that you say? Mr. Marley died seven years ago this very day. Would it be too much to ask that you return to the work for which I pay you so handsomely? Mr. Cratchit! The fire's gone cold, Mr. Scrooge. Come over here, Mr. Cratchit. What is this? A shirt. And this? A waistcoat. And this? A coat. These are garments, Mr. Cratchit. Garments were invented by the human race's protection against the cold. Once purchased, they may be used indefinitely for the purpose for which they are intended. Coal burns. Coal is momentary and coal is costly. There will be no more coal burnt in this office today. Is that quite clear, Mr. Cratchit? Yes, sir. Now, please get back to work before I am forced to conclude that your services are no longer required. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas, Bob Cratchit. And the same to you, Mr. Fred. Merry Christmas, Uncle. I said, Merry Christmas, Uncle. <laughs> humbug. Christmas a humbug, Uncle. Surely you don't mean that. I do. What's Christmas but a time for buying things for which you have no need, no money? Time for finding yourself a year older, not an hour richer. <laughs> if I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips <laughs> should be boiled in his own pudding <laughs> and buried with a steak of holly through his heart. <laughs> Come now, Uncle. Neville, you keep Christmas in your way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it, but you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone, then. Much good it may do you, much good it has done you. There are a great many things from which I might have derived good, from which I have not profited, I dare say. Christmas among the rest. But I've always thought of Christmas time when it comes round as a good time, a kindly, forgiving, charitable time. A time when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut up hearts freely to their fellow creatures. And so Uncle Verde has never put a scrap of gold or silver into my pocket. I do believe that it has done me good. And I say, God bless it. Not a sound from you. And you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. You're quite a powerful speaker, sir. I wonder you don't go into Parliament. Please don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us, Dora. Dying with you. I'd see myself in hell for it. It would be a great joy to me. And to my wife. Yes, your wife. I'm told she brought very little to the marriage. A poor girl, instead. I love her. And she loves me. Love. Good afternoon, nephew. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Why can't we be friends? You are wasting my time. I'm sorry to find you so resolute. You've never had a quarrel, so far as I know. And so I shall keep my good humor. And wish you a Merry Christmas. Goodbye. And a Happy New Year. How's that fine family of yours, Bob Cratchit? Well, sir, all very well. Good. You'll give them my best wishes. Yes, sir, I shall. Thank you for remembering them. Goodbye, Crash. Goodbye, sir. And a Merry Christmas. Idiot. No, us. Nor do I wish to. My name is Poole, and this is Mr. Hackett. Excellent. Now, if you'll allow me to pass. Uh, let me explain, sir. At this festive season of the year, it seems desirable that those of us with means should make some slight provision for the poor and destitute who suffer greatly at this time. Provision? Are you seeking money from me then? Many thousands are in want of common necessaries. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comforts. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons. The workhouses, are they still in operation? They are. I wish I could say they were not. The treadmill, the poor houses, still in full vigor? All very busy, sir. 
<laughs> I was afraid from what you said that something had stopped them in full force. A few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and food and warmth. Oh, what can we put you down for, sir? Nothing. You wish to be anonymous? I wish to be left alone. Since you ask me what I wish, gentlemen, that is my answer. I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. My taxes help to support the public institutions which I have mentioned, and they cost enough. Those who are badly off must go there. Many can't go there, and many would rather die. If they would rather die, perhaps they had better do so and uh, decrease the surplus population. Surely you don't mean that, sir. With all my heart. Now, if you will go about your business, gentlemen, and allow me to go about